Today, I'd like to share with you how I got over 50 data science interviews throughout the course of my statistics degree at the University of Waterloo. Now, I'd like to preface this with if you are someone that thinks that you can't learn this stuff, or you think that your peers are all achieving better things than you, stop thinking like that. It does not matter at all, and it's not true. What matters is that you're watching this video, which means you are caring, and it means that you are, tr that you are trying, so you will succeed, and that is all it takes, I promise you. So, I'm going to read from a script, and if you want to read that as well, then I have it right here for you. I have had the chance to interview with over 50 different companies, and out of these, I did six specific internships. It was common to conduct 10, 15, or even 20 plus data science interviews in a two week period. I won't lie, simply being in the co-op program at the University of Waterloo in a STEM field played a massive role. So my first recommendation is to try for something of a similar prestige, but that is not everything. I know tons of peers that didn't have the same success, as well as many people without a prestigious background that made a successful career transition to data science. Here is my story. In 2016, I was grinding like mad to get the best possible marks in high school so that I could get into a good university. I got accepted into the University of Waterloo in Ontario, Canada for their Honours Mathematics Co-op degree. It is a five-year program where you choose a specific major after a general first year, and you can choose when and where you wish to do six four-month internships throughout those five years. In first year, I had no idea what I was doing, my marks were not phenomenal, and I was adjusting moving away from home for the first time in my life, although my parents were only an hour drive away, which was nothing compared to the 12-hour flights that many students were dealing with, it was still far enough that it took a ton of adjusting. The work was extremely difficult, but after 8 months of hard work, I had the chance to go even further for my first internship. This was for the federal government of Canada, and to be honest, I mostly took this out of desperation. With no real jobs on my resume at all, even with the phenomenal connections that the university has with companies worldwide, it was anything but easy to get an internship. I had applied to over 100 companies with very little success. Nonetheless, I absolutely loved the work there. I believe my official title was junior analyst, but the majority of it was really a typical programming job. Actually, it wasn't really supposed to be. I forced that to happen. Here's my first huge tip for you. Learn programming. Forget about data science for now. Coding is ridiculously powerful on its own, and with only simple Java knowledge and first year concepts, I was able to provide a massive amount of value to the organization. After four months there, I went back to live at the university to start second year. Honestly, second year was mostly a repeat of first year, except my mindset was starting to shift. I wasn't just throwing all my work into studies. Sometimes I'd spend entire days creating projects for my GitHub, and this was the beginning of where I started to get ahead of my peers. While everyone was focusing on getting their grades as high as possible, I was learning skills that companies actually needed, and more importantly, I was doing what I really wanted to be doing. This idea of doing what you want to will be recurring throughout the video, but go check out machine learning Pokemon on my GitHub if you want to see what I was up to at this time. I'm also not saying that school isn't important. It definitely is, but think critically about what will drive you the most success depending on what it is that you are trying to achieve. Around this time, I was shifting to learn about neural networks because they were super interesting to me. I did the machine learning course by Andrew Ng, and while I was applying, uh, while I was learning, I applied for my second internship. This time, I got a ton of interviews, but I made a crucial mistake in the application process. I spent the majority of them on jobs I didn't really want. Why? Simply nerves that I didn't, that I wouldn't get any job, which almost happened a year earlier. Do not ever do this. I applied to organizations I wasn't interested in and positions I didn't want, like software testing. I did get a few machine learning interviews, but I did very poorly on most of them because I just didn't have the skills that I needed to. I ended up taking a normal software job at a different sector of the Canadian government because I didn't have much better options. The job wasn't overly interesting, so I'll skip over that part, but in that four months I took the deep learning specialization by Andrew Ng, which really opened my eyes to what these neural network things could do and how to actually get them to solve interesting problems. My portfolio on paper wasn't fantastic at this time, but I was starting to actually understand this stuff. Please never forget that these fundamentals are more important than any project or accomplishment on paper. I went back to Waterloo to start my third year, which I loosely decided that statistics was the best road to take. 
you don't really have to decide until third year, and even then there's a lot of wiggle room about choosing your major. I knew at this point that I loved machine learning, and so my career was going to be in data science. So it just made logical sense to take as many statistics courses at the university and to show employers that this was something I understood the theory behind. I personally doubt that choosing a different major like combinatorics and optimization or pure math would change the opinions of many employers. It was more of a decision regarding what I really wanted to be learning about. I've honestly never been one for that low level theory anyway. So I chose what was most applied to what I was doing. In hindsight, I agree with fully with my choice. Anyways, after my first half of third year, I had two internships of experience on my resume, a few small projects that showed my interest in data science, and a ton of machine learning theory in my brain. I pretty much just threw all of the common buzzwords at the top of my resume, like convolutional neural networks, LSTM, CNNs, and whatever happened to be in the job descriptions that I was looking at. The projects definitely helped, but they really weren't the main reason for what followed. I got a ton of data science interviews that term. It is very difficult to get an offer for any of these without any professional experience in data science, but I managed to talk one employer into believing in the skills that I had. This was because I showed the employer that I actually knew what I was talking about, which cannot be overlooked. It will be extremely difficult to get a job offer without proving to the employer that you know what you're doing. Learn your stuff and practice communicating it as much as you possibly can. At this, at this position, I did odd analytics jobs and finally got to make some machine learning models. I actually spent eight months at this company, which used up my third and fourth internships because I was so happy that I got the job. Most importantly, I now had on my resume that I was a professional data scientist. Fast forwarding, I got a machine learning position at Lobla, which owns nearly every grocery store in the country, and afterwards I took a computer vision position at a medical startup called Deep Breathe, which is where I work currently. In total, I really did have over 50 data science interviews throughout the five years. In between Loblaw and Deep Breathe, I started my YouTube channel, which gives a ton of credibility to my communication and technical skills, and most importantly, my passion for the subject. This is what you need to show employers to get their attention, and if I were to start over, I would do this as soon as possible. The truth is, it's pretty tough to convince employers that you're worthy of a data science position without prior experience. But what you do have control of is showing how much you know and how much you are passionate about it, and it's really up to you to choose how to do this. Something that accomplishes both of these things is the material that I have down below in the description, so make sure you take a look at that if you haven't already. By the way, Coursera Plus sale is on right now, so you might want to check that out. And absolutely, getting into an excellent university is extremely helpful and really helps build up credibility. But no matter what, you've got to show employers that you love this stuff and you know what you're doing. That's really the secret here. And if you're feeling discouraged, just keep trying. I know you can do it. Be sure to subscribe if you aren't already. And I will see you next time, guys.